Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulullah, we're back. Today you guys are going to get a bit of a history lesson. This is our sheikh, Jamil Alameen, formerly known as H. Rap Brown. Now, for those of you who don't know him, he is a legend in the civil rights movement, an absolute legend. Uh, he is formerly of the Black Panther Party, and there's a lot of history behind the Black Panther Party. It was absolutely dismantled and destroyed by the FBI and admittedly done so. It was labeled as a fringe uh, terrorist group and it was uh, it was basically uh, destroyed by the FBI by all kinds of nefarious means, by infiltration, by uh, false arrest, by uh, assassination, all of these things happen, and every single uh, figure in the Black Panther movement has been either arrested or killed or you know, something of that nature, right? So our Sheikh, uh, Jamil al -Amin, is also, up until this day, a political prisoner in the United States. This book, Revolution by the Book, by the way, uh, it is one of the best books that you can give to a non-Muslim or a new Muslim, the way that he lays down the five pillars of Islam in a very simple manner, right? So I just wanted to put that out there. But now, why am I talking about Sheikh Jamil al -Amin? Because... Uh, he did lectures while he was in the Black Panther Party. And I'm going to play a lecture for you guys right now. You guys are going to get a little history lesson. I know a lot of you are not from North America, and you really don't understand what is going on with the Black community and why all of this rioting and upheaval in the West. You don't get it. So you guys are going to get a glimpse of history now. This lecture from the Sheikh, uh, Jamil al -Amin, was done in 1968. Keep in mind, this is 1968. And I want you just to listen to the lecture and inshallah tomorrow, uh, I'll do a, a um, whatchamacallit, um, a play-by-play, -play, right? So uh, we ask Allah to expiate his freedom and we ask Allah to totally destroy white supremacy and its people and its children and every single person that supports white supremacy. I mean, forever. And without further ado, uh, Sheikh Jamil al -Amin. See, unlike America would have us believe, the greatest problem confronting this country today is not pollution and bad breath. <laughs> it's black people. It's black people. See, that's just one of the big lies that America tells you and that you go for because you chumps. You go for it. One of the lies that we tell ourselves is that we are making progress. But here is chairs empty. We're not making progress. We tend to equate progress with concessions. We can no longer make that mistake. You see, when they gave us that nigga astronaut. You say we were making progress, but I told you they were going to lose him in space. He didn't get that far. They gave you Thurgood Marshall, and you said we were making progress. Thurgood Marshall is a term of the highest order. Anybody who sits down before, anybody who sits before James O. Eastland, a camera, Brett Peckerwood, nasty hunky from Mississippi. And let James O. Eastland subject him to the type of questioning that he did. He's a strange breed of man. You put Adam Powell in office and you couldn't keep him. 
What you think they're going to do with Thurgood Marshall when they get tired of him? They gave you Walter Washington of Washington, D.C., and you said we were making progress. That's not progress. See, it's no in-between. You're either free or you're a slave. There's no such thing as second-class citizenship. That's like telling me you can be a little bit pregnant. The only politics in this country that's relevant to black people today is the politics of revolution. None other. There is no difference between the Democratic and Republican Party. The, the similarities are greater than the differences of those parties. What's the difference between Lynchum Johnson and Goldwater? None. But a lot of you running around talking about you Democrats and the Democrats got you in the biggest trick going. They tell you that it ain't our fault. It's the Dixocrats. There's no such thing as a Dixocrat. The only difference between George Wallace and Lyndon Johnson is one of them's wife got cancer. That's the only difference. But you go for it. You go for it because you chumps. You go for it. The only thing that's going to free Huey is gunpowder, black powder. Huey Newton is the only living revolutionary in this country today. He has paid his dues. He paid his dues. How many white folks you killed today? But you revolutionaries, you are revolutionaries. Che Guevara says it's only two ways to leave the battlefield, victorious or dead. Hugh is in jail. That's no victory, that's a concession. When black people become serious, about the revolutionary struggle that they are caught up in, whether they recognize it or not. When they begin to go down and knock off people who are oppressing them and begin to render these people impotent, that's when the revolutionary struggle unfolds. Not until. So I want to develop upon what Bobby was talking about, about green power, because green power is a myth. There's no such thing as green power as long as that honky got the power to change the color of money. It's power that controls this country to show you America's wandering use and abuse of power in connection with money. Internationally, America changed the international gold standard from monetary standard from gold to paper gold. Her gold reserve had dwindled to $13.7 billion. France had 12.9. That's why De Gaulle was raising all that hell. De Gaulle says, I got almost as much gold as you. So how are you going to have more votes than me in the monetary system? The United States got slick because they had power. They changed it to something that they got abundance of, paper gold paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump. You go for it because you enjoy being lied to. You enjoy being lied to. You find your security in the lies that white America tells you. For 400 years, she taught you white nationalism and you lapped it up. You taught it to your children. You had your children thinking that everything black was bad. Black cows don't give good milk. Black hens don't lay eggs. 
black for funerals, white for weddings. You see, everything black is bad. The only black biblical character you knew was Judas. That's all. Syrup of black drop. That's white nationalism. Santa Claus. A white honky who slides down a black chimney and comes out white. Flush colored band aids. They had a brother who put one on and thought something was wrong with his skin. That's cause you chumps, you go for it. You enjoy white nationalism. Huntley and Brinkley, black folks got more confidence in Huntley and Brinkley than Catholics got in the Pope. They believe anything. According to Huntley and Brinkley, we threw fighting in Vietnam. We threw killing the enemy, we shooting trees. But you go for it, that's what you wanna hear. And you say that you're revolutionaries. But if you are revolutionaries, you must assume the revolutionary posture. Chairman Mao says power comes from the barrel of a gun. Yes, politics is war without bloodshed, and war is an extension of those politics. But there is no politics in this country that's relevant to us, to black people. Bobby Kennedy sold black people out. He doesn't, he's not interested in black people. He called for vigilante action this summer. He says that the good citizens should ban with the policemen to put down lawbreakers. You know who lawbreakers are in this country. Johnson can always sit up and talk about, he can always raise an argument about law and order because he never talks about justice. But black people fall for that same argument and they go around talking about lawbreakers. We did not make the laws in this country. We are neither mor morally nor legally confined to those laws. Those laws that keep them up keep us down. You got to begin to understand that. Lyndon Johnson, Lyndon Johnson has set the attitude that the atmosphere, rather, rather, for vigilanteism in the country when he came out in his latest speech, I guess you call it, and said that one day law-abiding citizens will rise up to put down the lawbreakers, and one week later the longshoremen went over and beat the peace movement up with hooks. That's vigilante action. The same thing happened during the Battle of Algiers, the Algerian Revolution, when France passed the proclamation establishing people's militias. That's what this country is doing. That's why white folks are buying guns. They're buying them for you. And understand, class differences will not save you. There is no such thing as a black middle class. You don't believe it? Go to Detroit. There's no such thing as a black middle class. The man does not beat your head because you got a Cadillac or because you got a Ford. He beats you because you're black. Class structures are a luxury that we cannot afford. They cannot divide us by saying that you're middle class or you're lower class. He kills you because you're black. The concentration camps, they got 37 in the country and me and Carmichael can't fill all of them. They got to be taking somebody else. You got to stop dividing yourselves you got to organize. I agree with Bobby. We are not outnumbered, we are out-organized. You have to organize on every level. Everybody in the black community must organize. And then we decide whether we will have alliances with other people or not, but not until we are organized. In terms of the revolution, I believe that the revolution will be a revolution of dispossessed people in this country. That's the Mexican-American, the Puerto Rican-American, the American Indian, and black people.
We happen to be the vanguard of that revolutionary struggle because we are the most dispossessed. An old African leader says about leadership, he says that leadership should never be shared. It should always remain in the hands of the dispossessed people. We will lead the revolution. I want to end because Brother Carmichael has a message for you. I'm sure he has a lot to tell you about his revolutionary struggle, about the revolutionary struggle. Okay, you asked for it, brothers. Okay, we're going to talk about law and order versus justice in America then. You see, Lyndon Johnson can always sit up and talk about, he can always raise an argument about law and order because he never talks about justice. But black people fall for that same argument and they go around talking about lawbreakers. We did not make the laws in this country. We are neither mor morally nor legally confined to those laws. Those laws that keep them up keep us down. You've got to begin to understand that. See, justice is a joke in this country, and it stinks of its hypocrisy. Johnson is Hitler's illegitimate child, and Diego Hoover... <laughs> and Diego Hoover is his half-sister. And we must conduct our struggle on this level. We are fighting enemies of the people. America for centuries, for years, have blackmailed oppressed people with the threat of nuclear war and war in general. The natural reaction becomes not to fear war. This is the lesson we learned from Vietnam. They tell you your problem is unemployment. Well, I got a program that can employ every black person in this country overnight. <laughs> Ain't nobody in Vietnam unemployed. Think about that when you need a job. We're talking about revolution because that's the era that you're caught in. You're caught in a revolutionary era. See, black people are responding to a poem that Langston Hughes wrote a long time ago, a poem that was in the form of a question that was never answered. The poem was, What Happens to a Dream Deferred? It says, What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or does it fester like a sore and then run? Or does it sag like a heavy load? Or does it explode? Detroit answered that. <laughs> you, see, they used to call it Detroit. Now they call it destroyed. <laughs> but America is moving to combat that. She's saying this summer, what we can't buy off, we're going to kill off. That's why she's building up her armories. Understand that. This is what the National Guard is all about. This is what the new weapons are all about. You see, the poverty programs for the last five years have been buy-off programs. In Harlem, which has been one of the greatest victims of the poverty program, how you act is nothing but an act. That's all it is. They give the brothers $45 a week to go to manpower, to come to class at manpower training. That $45 a week goes into drugs. That's just enough to keep the brother hooked. That's all. They pay you enough to keep you hooked. The poverty program was not designed to eliminate poverty. It does not speak about the ending poverty. It does not speak about how poverty is embedded in this society. Rather, it talks about the effects of poverty, not the causes. 
Black people must address itself to the causes of poverty. That's oppression in this country. So black people all across this country are uniting. They must unite. And they must organize themselves. Everybody has a responsibility in that community. Women, men, children, take them out to Boy Scouts and get you a black guard. You must begin to take over your institutions, your schools, because that's where the young minds are. The last time I was out here was for the Watts picnic. <laughs> See, I don't believe that Watts burned down so they can have a picnic every year. But what they did during that time was that they took 7,000 kids on weekend notice. They gathered up 7,000 kids and took them off to a military camp. That's a dangerous thing. Next year, they say they hope to take a million. What if they took a million and they didn't come back? Who go and get them, chump? <laughs> you must address yourselves to these problems. These are the problems you live with daily. They don't want your old hard heads. They want the young minds. You see, ours might be to do or die, but for the little brothers, theirs should be but the reason why. So now I really am going to end. Because, wait. And in ending, I want to end in the Swahili saying, it says, La Sima Tusinda Bila Shaka, which means, we shall conquer without a doubt. Black power. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her, and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you, we're using rocks for currencies, chump. <laughs> <laughs>